Jak Larry Fritchy! Oh yeah! One, two! Ow! We gotta get on with it, get on with it, until it comes. Get on with it, get on with it, until it comes. I'm gonna get on with it. What is this? What is this? How you doing, folks? Laban Schmal here, coming to you from FEMA region number three. All right, Laban, what's up? Where you at? Watch with the still pictures. All right, let me tell you, folks. Shirley dropped my hat into a pot of veal shanks. That's right. Asso buco, my bunkies. Man, oh, man, you get that little spoon and dig the marrow out of that bone. Oh, my goodness. I'm certain. Certain there's going to be some out-of-this-world asabuco at the marriage supper at LM. It's that good. Clean that hat, Shirley. Whoa, Shirley, play that harp. Yeah. Woo! Me. That's it, woman. Do it. Yeah. There you go. You got to see me move around a little bit. I want to show you a piece of video that I did last year. Not quite a year ago. Last May. I was talking about something that I'm very fond of. And then we'll go on and I'll get to the point I'm trying to make. It's going to knock your socks off. Look behind me there. Look what I got there. Look, uh, oh, let me get my thumb right so you can see what I'm pointing. Look at the picture back there behind me. You know what that is? That's a moose. That's a moose. And look over here. Look over, look at what I got here. You know what that is? That's a moose. Yeah, that's a moose. I like moose. Oh, hold on a second. About a second. Look what I got. I got a moose. Isn't that nice? I love the moose. It's very nice. You know, I read once that at one time in the state of Alaska, it was illegal to give alcoholic beverage to a moose. I think that was a good um, decision, that we shouldn't give alcoholic beverage to a moose. I think they get a little out of hand. All right, hold it right there. Here I am, back in the spring of 2014, decrying the fact that I am very fond of moose. And then just although it is a supposedly actual Alaskan law, I quip that it is not practical to give an alcoholic beverage to a moose. Well, several weeks after this video was posted, a story appeared on the web that some of you may have seen and recall. It was this. Did you have enough time to read that? Did you get that? Moose gets drunk, walks in the bus, then triggers panic because locals think it is Satan. <laughs> what are the odds of this? <laughs> I mean, I just did a video a couple of weeks before I see this story where I am kidding around about a moose being given an alcoholic beverage and it wouldn't be good because they might get knots and here is an actual story of a moose that gets drunk and slams into a bus and the people think it's the devil. Apparently this happened somewhere in the United Kingdom. Why do you think the people thought it was Hasatan, this moose, that was loaded? Here's why. Read this part of the article along with me, my friend. After the moose's head slammed through the bus's windscreen, police noticed the vehicle's speedometer read 666.6. Six, six, six six. The digits famously represent the mark of the beast and are used by Satanists to invoke the spirit of Lucifer. Several passengers held a roadside service and prayed as police and firemen battled to remove the dead moose from the front of the bus. They thought the beast was cursed when, in fact, it was merely drunk, said a police officer. Look at that moose inside the bus. Look at the number, 666.6. Six, six, six. Right across, there's three fives. My goodness, this is absolutely... <laughs> I don't know what it is. Let's read the other part of the article. It is thought the sozzled moose got drunk by eating rotting fruit and wandered into the path of the speeding bus. Bus driver Isaac Voronov said, The thing ran straight out of the woods, bordering the highway, and I could not avoid hitting it. I noticed the 666 on the speedometer, too, but I'm not a superstitious person. Well, good for you, Itzhak. There's another picture of moose hanging out of the bus. I read uh, below the uh, picture. But when some of the old deers on the bus heard about it, 
they began crossing themselves right away, rattling their beads, and setting up a cross at the side of the road to pray for salvation. Rattling their beads? Was this a bus full of Catholics? Was it nuns? What is this? It says they prayed for salvation. I mean, what are the odds of this? Why didn't I do a follow-up? Well, I think there was a reason why I didn't. It might be strange to you, but I think it's a confirmation of the things that I've been talking about in my last video, and you'll see why in a moment. Let me first say that from the very moment I saw this story, I wanted to do a follow-up. But why didn't I? Until now. Well, I gotta tell you, and it's the absolute truth. That as soon as I finished my last video, you know, the one I just did about Paris, France, and the Terra Babel, and, and how, the you know, this live earth thing leads right up to the UN Conference on Climate Change in December in Paris. Well, right after I finished that video, I all of a sudden, after eight months, and I'm being completely honest here, I kept thinking about that moose that ran into the bus, and why I never showed that in a video when I had just talked about it. You know, well, I decide just for a lead-in to my next video, which is the one after the Paris one, this one here, I figure, well, why not? I'll talk about how I mentioned the moose and, and about how I thought it was funny if a moose got drunk and then all of a sudden it really happened. Okay, so I pull up the moose headline, which I had bookmarked eight months ago, and I'm about to add it to the timeline in my editing program, and I see the date the story came out. I put my head down into my hands, and I just began muttering out loud, Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Elohim, what is this? What in the world is this? And what I felt as I prayed was an overwhelming sense of confirmation, my friends. And why is it that I sense this? Well, the day that this evil agenda of this live earth road to Paris begins, is June 18th, 2015, exactly one year to the day from when that moose ran headlong into a bus whose speedometer just happened to read 666.6. .6. I shuddered, like you wouldn't believe. I took a few breaths, tried to stop shaking, and I thought, well, the video's going to be a little different now, <laughs> to say the least. Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is the story that first got me started on the UN's evil agenda. This one. 500 days to avoid climate chaos. And I look at the date of that story, and I'm shaking all over again. Because that story breaks on the same day I make the video talking about how much I like moose and how they shouldn't drink, which, as we have established, was posted about a month before an actual moose gets drunk. Then, that's right, then, <laughs> I think I gotta take a little break. And I decide to catch up on a few videos of other watch folk. So I notice that one has been posted by none other than the very first, yes, the very first Bible prophecy commentator that I ever watched on YouTube, probably back in 2012. And I'd also noticed that it was the first one he'd posted in about a month. So I clicked on it. And check out the title. It's only 1 minute and 46 seconds, so here, watch it. It's the great Paul McGuire. Hi, I'm Paul McGuire from Paris, France. Behind me is the place of the Republic where the great uh, mass demonstration after the Charlie Hebdo attack here in Paris uh, where people said, we are not afraid. And they gathered here behind me. And this is a very historical place because the statue where this uh, demonstration occurred, it's a, a goddess going back to the French Revolution. It's the, the goddess of reason or the goddess of logic, which is the, the philosophical center of the French Revolution and the spiritual center. But what's very interesting is that in the symbol of the woman is a secret uh, occult mystery. She is the goddess that goes back to Nimrod's wife, Semiramis, or Isis. Um, so the, the goddess of the French Revolution 
goes all the way back to occultic and secret occult societies as the goddess of reason. Originally Isis, who was originally named Semiramis, who was Nimrod's wife at the Tower of Babel in Babylon. And there's a relationship between the Tower of Babel and Babylon and the French Revolution where man is God. That, that is the the spiritual struggle of our time. I'm Paul McGuire. All right, you can hold it right there. Thank you very much, Paul. Now, I haven't seen a Paul McGuire video in over a month, so I click on it. It's his latest. He's in France. <laughs> And he's talking about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. The fact that the world came together in unity over that Charlie Hebdo terrorist attack, you know, back in... Well, actually, it was just one week into the new year. It was like January 7th. He mentions that statue behind him that represents the French Revolution. What else do you think about when you think of the French Revolution? <laughs> Guillotines! Oculus Rift! Remember I made the video about them nuts pretending to get their heads chopped off with virtual reality machine? Goodness gracious, this is just too much. I mean, folks, <laughs> this December, the elite of the world is gathering in Paris, France, as one to bring about global change. And he's talking about the French Revolution and the Terra Babel. Well, he says, Babel, they made it to matter. Eh? So my head's spinning around again. My heart's pounding. And I'm thinking, we got the satanic moose, not for just three sixes, but four. We got the correlating dates that relate uh, back to the climate chaos. Maguire's talking about the Tower of Babel and the French Revolution, which of course means more to American progressives than our own revolution. You can certainly Google that, my friends. So I figure, all right, why not? Why not? What do you got to lose? Go on the web. Take a look, see at what might have happened, if anything, on June 18th throughout history. Folks, uh, I think you ought to maybe put on a seat belt and, and take one of them big 800 milligram ibuprofens if you got one. <laughs> this is going to get you. Take it with milk. So uh, here I am. I go on History Orb. I put in June 18th. I scan down. And I see a little item. Hmm, what is this? What is this? The little historical item I see for June 18th, 1815 features this gentleman right here. And the man's name is Arthur Wellesley, but he's better known as the Duke of Wellington. And on June 18, 1815, this man was quite integral in the ruination of this man. That's right. You're looking at him too, aren't you? On June 18th, 2015, that day will mark the exact 200th anniversary of the Battle of <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, friends. I, I, I'm just a flabbergasted. Library Road to Paris just happens to fall on the exact 200th anniversary of the most notorious battle in French history and the ruination of their, of him? I mean, Napoleon Bonaparte is considered, along with Adolf Hitler, as, as a precursor to Antichrist, as, as a type of Antichrist, for Pete's sakes. Man, what are the odds of this? I mean, the, the Battle of Waterloo was, was humiliating to France. I mean, could this, could this be a harbinger? You know, a harbinger of doom for this, this climate summit that's meeting in Paris in, in December of this year? Having it take place on the 200th anniversary of one of the most notorious military battles in all of human history? <laughs> and I would have never just looked that up. I mean... I wouldn't have known anything about this if I hadn't decided to finally put that story up about the moose. You know how, oh my goodness, this is weird. And we're not done. Oh no. Well, I go back to good old history orb, and as you can see, there it is, June 18, there it is. 
and I figure, well, I only got down to 1815, so I figure, oh, there he is, look at this, so I figure, oh, Henry VIII, so I figure, I keep on going on, I keep on going on, and I go, and I look, oh, my goodness, what do I see? A little entry for the year 1912. Okay, you got on your seatbelt, and, uh, and you took a pill, but this one you might, uh, maybe get in a straitjacket. Okay, 1912. Yeah. You recognize him? Look real close. That's right. Mr. Environmentalist. Yeah, look real close. And also at all the animals he's killed. Him. The much-revered Teddy Roosevelt. What are you gonna do, Laban? Gonna say some bad stuff about old T.R.? Yes, I am. Because there's bad stuff to say about old T.R. You know what he did? Didn't really think about it much, you know. <laughs> I figured, you know, he was all right because he started the national parks and all this kind of stuff. He was very charismatic. He, the country was in decent shape while he was president. But then he had a fallen out with William Howard Taft, our largest president. And, uh... I don't know if that's got to do with it, but uh, they had a fallen out, and Teddy ran against him for the presidency. And in order to do that, he started a brand new political party. It was called, of all things, the Progressive Party. That's right. The French Revolution, you know, that's, <laughs> that's what the progressives today love. Go online and Google a list of prominent progressives. It'll make you sick. I mean, you got John Maynard Keynes and Margaret Sanger, Woodrow Wilson, and his fifth cousin. I don't even want to say his name. Yeah, he just flew by. And this whole global warming crowd progresses every one of them. And, and, and he starts this party. T.R. starts this party, this progressive party, on June 18th. The same day that they're doing that, oh my goodness, this is too much. But you see, the Progressive Party, and here's where you got to start buckling that straight jacket up. The Progressive Party had a had another name, had a nickname, and a symbol. You ready? The Progressive. Bull Moose Party. Well, I almost jumped out the window. Now, I knew Elohim wasn't going to let me jump out the window. But when I saw this, I just didn't... I mean, come on now. What are the odds of this? I wasn't even going to... I didn't even think about putting up the thing about the moose for eight months. And then all of a sudden, after I do the video about Paris, France, I start thinking about this moose, and then bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. I mean, one thing right after another. I was going to do a video about light and darkness, a Bible study. And I thought, well, in the beginning, you know, I, I do a little, you know, I do a little levity stuff, you know. I thought maybe I'll show that thing about the moose and how, you know, a month later there came a, it really happened. And as I was researching, one thing, I, well, you're seeing the video here, I don't know, you know. But okay, you, you put on a belt, you took a pill, you got on your straight jacket. Well, I don't know what you're going to do for this next one. Don't jump out the window. Well, we got one more. And I caught it just at the last minute. I mean, not at the last minute, but, you know, it was one of the big news stories of the day. As I speak right now, it is, uh, it is 12.26 a.m., so I suppose it is February the 28th. Goodness gracious, the last day of February. Hmm. Well, yesterday, we lost one of uh, America's most familiar faces. This one, right here. But I should have said it was one of the most recognizable faces in the world, actually. Not just in America. Now, if you don't know who it is, you must have been living under a rock or out in space. <laughs> but, um... When I first heard that Mr. Nimoy had passed away, I asked Elohim to check him out, and I hope maybe he was, I don't know if he was saved, I know if he was a Jewish man, but I don't know if he was saved, anything like that, don't know what his uh, standing was with Elohim. 
the, you know, hey, I thought to myself, oh, no, 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 just, no, no, no wild moose chases here. <laughs> just, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> you can't listen to the heart. The heart, the, the heart is deceitful. Who can know it? And our brains, well, our brains are fried half of the time. But my gut, my gut never lies. And all of a sudden, the gut started talking, Laban, you know what you gotta do, Laban. Well, I didn't go on to uh, history orb to see what day he was born, to see if he was born June 18th or anything like that. The first thing that came to my mind was about Spock, you know, from Star Trek, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, he was half human. Now, of course, I'm I'm talking about Spock. I don't mean, you know, Lenny Nimoy. I mean, he was, you know, he was all human. Well, you know, you know what I'm getting at. Spock had a human mother. And I'm thinking to myself, if she was French, I'm going to flip out. So I, I I actually go and research it. You know, what was the nationality of Spock's mother? You know, that's what I put in. Well, I find a website that talks about Spock's mother. You know, all kinds of Star Trek stuff, you know. Here's the website. And I'm looking, see what I can find out about Spock's mother. <laughs> The things we do. And no, no, she's not French. Nothing about June 18th, nothing like that. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what the, um, what the first episode was of the Star Trek series where Spock's parents first appeared. And I found it. And here's the title. <laughs> 